Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today I'm going to do a remake of one of our original recipes, an old family favorite. We did this way back in like 2013 on YouTube, one of our original videos. But these days our production quality has gotten quite better, so we wanted to redo it for you today. Again, we're going to take that recipe, we're going to scale it down into the number eight camp made Dutch oven and do it for two. Stay tuned. So today's dish is something my grandmother used to call beef biscuits. It's my dad's favorites, one of my favorites, one of my whole family's favorites. My kids loved it. Everybody I've ever had try it really, really love this dish. So I thought it, it deserved another go around here at the Backwoods Gourmet Channel. And you know, we're going to scale it down for two today, but if you want to make it for four, just double these amounts of ingredients and use your number 10 deep or your number 12 uh, Dutch oven. It's been raining for about the last 24 hours. We were going to do this on uh, open fire, but uh, just this thing will work out. So we're going to do the first part of the dish today over on the propane burner, and then at the end, we're going to bring in some charcoal and finish it up. So let me show you what you're going to need to get started with this dish. So what you're going to need to start this dish out is some, some beef uh, cubed up, and it, it doesn't have to be fancy beef. Uh, shanks, ground steak, whatever other tough cut you got, a piece of leftover brisket, uh, whatever. Uh, that's the greatest thing about it. And that's why, you know, you could take a really cheap cut of meat and make it really awesome here, shanks. You could also use venison the same way. Uh, you're gonna need some onion. I got about a half a cup, roughly diced. I'm using today's Swiss chard stalks because that's what we have fresh in the garden. They, to me, they cook like celery, but a little bit sweeter. But if you don't have those, use celery. We have some all-purpose flour, some uh, steak seasoning. Today, we're just going to use Montreal steak seasoning. And we're going to go ahead and start seasoning up our beef. And I should have got a bigger bowl. I'll have a... Uh, little Makita cleanup crew out here on that one in a second I'm sure alright so we're going to season pretty generously because we're not bringing a lot of seasoning into this dish then we're going to go ahead and put them in the, over here in the, in the flour and we're going to dredge them yeah, and just toss them all in there make sure they all get coated in the flour you want to do this a little ahead of time even before you get your pot ready just to let that uh, little bit of salt and season start bringing some of the juices out and then that'll help bind the uh, flour to them. So just dredged. All right, now it's time to get our, our, uh, our little eight inch camp made over there on the fire. So we got the little camp made over there on a medium high heat. I'm gonna go ahead in with about two tablespoons of oil. Uh, if you're using the 12 inch, you're gonna need about four. So you wanna that bottom of that oven to get a pretty good little coat of oil on it. So medium high heat we're gonna brown this but we don't want to burn it to burn the flour for number eight I'm gonna take like a handful of the meat just enough to cover the bottom and that's how you're gonna gauge your ingredients uh, when you make this bigger your oven more pieces you're gonna take to cover the bottom so we're not gonna use all the ones we got that's fine I'm gonna go ahead and stick them back in the fridge and I'll Make something with that later. So those are starting to look pretty brown. I'm going to go ahead and go in with that half a cup of onions. I go in with just about half of our leaf chard stalks. Let's stick a lid on for just a sec. And let this start sweat. Give that a couple of minutes. We come up to one of them. Throw in a bay leaf. That's about a half a bay leaf, and just enough stock to kind of bring up everything. 
and it's going to thicken pretty quick there too. Alright, so that's uh, beef stock. This is from Better Than Bouillon. It is the best that I've found. Alright, now I'm going to cut that fire down. Get a simmer. Got a lot of heat in that cast iron right now. Put the lid on it. We'll keep the rest of our stock handy just to keep it freshened up if we need to. Now it's going to simmer for about 35 to 45 minutes until the meat's tender. So it's been our 35 minutes. I'm going to go in, let's take our lid off and uh, check on our meat. It's getting really tender. Okay. So while we can, let's go ahead and take that bay leaf out of there. We don't. Yeah, it's easy to find right this second. We'll go ahead and pull that bay leaf out. Don't want to be chomping on that thing. And give it a little stir. Oh my god, yes. Alright. And the smell coming off of that right now is something really special. So, we don't want to put any more salt in it. Um, but I do have some uh, more... This is ground uh, black pepper and rosemary. Let me give that a little season of that. So here's the things you're going to need for the next step. We're going to put some carrots. We're going to kind of layer these on top. Um, use your favorites, okay? Something I put on here you don't like, use something different. We went out to the store out there to the garden and got some fresh scallions because those those initial onions we put in there those have all cooked down to to um, right into the gravy so we want to have a little texture too so and then uh, some more of those Swiss chard stems and these will you know you'll still be able to taste those in. and then just I had one little broccoli plant out there that was bolting and uh, starting to flower and that you can leave this out if you don't have it um, but like I say you put a number of different things in here so let's uh, take our spoon kind of just press them down we want them to stay on top though we don't want to mix them totally in there but we just want to push them right down into that broth okay so that uh, they'll start cooking and uh, we're going to give them a little head start and then I'm going to show you the big twist to, to this dish, beef biscuits. Got charcoal going over here, so that ain't far off. So today's biscuits, we're going to actually use a product that I just found in my local grocery Publix here in Florida, all over Southeast United States, called Southern Biscuit. So this is also, this video is going to be a review of this product so you can do a lot of different stuff with it. Today we're going to try it out and see if it even compares to my homemade biscuits. And for our topping on our beef biscuits today, we're going to do some cheddar drop biscuits, okay? So I was really intrigued with this product because you can make pancakes with it and biscuits and all kind of cobblers all kind of stuff like that so I'm always looking for a product I can take camping that will cover a lot of different kind of uh, you know menus without bringing all those separate ingredients if I could just bring one little thing and it's already got the lard in it it says so or shortening we just add milk and we'll see how it goes I'll give you a you know review of how it turns out at the end of the video so don't go anywhere so we got some charcoal going over there. We're going to bring over our lid because we want to preheat our lid for when we put the biscuits in. Okay, I think this is pretty important. And we want 450 if we can get to that. So I've got me a bunch of charcoal going and I'm going to completely cover the top of this lid and I'm going to put it over here. on. This is the Camp Mate collapsible um, multi thingy thingy of a bobber um, not a huge fan of it but it's handy so I'm gonna go ahead and just get as many charcoals up on that thing right now 
as it'll take and if it takes more than that I might get a couple more we got them spread on the Dutch oven table so what I'm doing is getting that lid hot prior to putting it on the Dutch oven so we're gonna go ahead to and we'll rain some out on the bottom to keep our bottom heat up I did got quite a few I'm using Kingsford today this is a Kingsford uh, hickory um, it seems to burn a little longer than a regular so anyway we got some staged over there. I don't want to get them too close to these rubber feet that this thing has. But again, preheating the lid, I think that's going to be the trick to make these biscuits come out great. So the uh, ingredients you're going to need to make the biscuit part is the Southern Biscuit Formula L complete biscuit mix, some milk. They say use buttermilk. I'm not a big fan. I'm using a re regular whole milk. I got about a quarter cup of shredded. Uh, that's Mexican four cheese blend. Use whatever you got. And a little bit of the rosemary and black pepper that we used in the dish. I'm gonna actually put a little bit of that in the biscuit mix also. So let's go ahead and put it together. Did the math on the bag and I kind of figured out it was gonna take about a half a cup to make four biscuits and maybe we'll make five so we'll give it another little like quarter cup all right I'm gonna give it go ahead in the dry ingredients gonna give that a little bit of our that's the rosemary and pepper and I think it's gonna be easier to put the cheese in now and mix it up with the dry ingredients all right and that mixed in there very well now we're going to go in with the milk and grab my spoon. So the package directions say add just enough milk to make this come together. Alright, so we're going to go real easy with it. We don't want to get it too wet according to the directions. I've never used this product before. So you're seeing if for the first time just like I am. That looks pretty dry to me. Alright, we got a nice little dough there. And uh, hopefully these are going to rise up too. So I think we want to put uh, we want to make it into fours but it, we're going to spoon these on so no need to do anything we'll let it sit there kind of soak up the rest of the moisture kind of marry up a little bit and then uh, as soon as our pot's ready we'll make the biscuits all right so let's turn off our fire over here bring over the number eight we got a ring only on the outside i don't want any direct heat up under the bottom Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do our drop biscuits. I think we're going to try to get about five. Okay. And uh, maybe one in the middle. Really sticky. See how it works out. Sticky dough. Last one might be a little bigger, but it's alright. Give a little bit of what's on the spoon to that middle one. Alright, now we got our preheated lid sitting right here next door. Let's try to get that over there without knocking any of the coals off of it. It's going to be a trick because it's completely covered. All right, carefully, right down on there, preheated. All right, again, we're trying to get that to 450. So let's get these coals off to the side there. Give a few minutes and we'll give it a check. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. It's been about 10 minutes. Biscuits look awesome. And uh, the bottom looks like it's mostly 
cook down. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off the fire. I don't want it to get too hot on the bottom, but I wish you could smell that right there. All right. serve this up backwards gourmet style go in there and get a piping hot scoop of that biscuits and that veg You guys hear or smell that guy? Little basil. There you go. It's back with gourmet beef biscuits in Dutch. Oven. feed Mrs. Backwoods I just go right in there and into the pot with my spoon let's give that a shot man steaming hot been a rainy cool day all day today some comfort food right here wow that's as uh, that's good as my original one but here I wanted to uh, try, especially that biscuit. Remember we used that southern biscuit mix? It's nice and light and fluffy. It's got the cheddar in it. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was pretty daggum good right there. So, um... Look forward for a future uh, Backwoods Gourmet video of us using a, just making straight up biscuits in the Dutch oven. Because that that uh, that mix was uh, was pretty handy. And it's nice and light and fluffy. Want to buy that. I know you do. So if you like what we're doing, please smash that like button right down there to see another great Backwoods Gourmet video. It's going to be right up there. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, and please ring the bell. It's going to be right over there. And for a whole playlist of cast iron Dutch oven cooking, it'll be right there. We'll see you next time.